life, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life, I never miss that fact. Um, I really think that there's been a sorely missed opportunity for developers to take a step back from competition and take a step forward with community. Mm. Um, and if, if they do that, I think we all win because community, I would argue is the one thing that no one's trying to solve. Mm -hmm. We're trying to solve recruitment. We're trying to solve competition. Tell me where's community. Mm -hmm. Honestly, any one of you go ahead, shout out. What's the national community for scholastic right now? Any title, tell me. Yeah. Where do I go? How do I meet and hang out? Of the storm. How does you community that, yeah. zero? There's yeah. nothing. It, it that, doesn't exist anymore. And it doesn't exist statewide. It doesn't exist school wide. It doesn't exist region wide. It doesn't exist nationally. It doesn't exist digitally on Twitch. It doesn't exist digitally on Discord. It doesn't exist through any form of skill based development. It doesn't exist on any form of, you know, uh, skill based learning or just pure socialization and fandom. Mm hmm huge missed opportunity you want to take their time and make it more efficient in my opinion uh tell riot scholastic politely to stop what they're doing with competitive and their integration with lcs should be you know uh twitch you know symposiums and summits and conversations and learning and uh all sorts of wonderful things and promoting camps and educational learning activities and rssa sponsored curriculum that will move the needle. I don't see any of that. So Chris, that was that was pretty much the last topic. You you kind of wrapped it in a nice package called community. And I was kind of thinking more from an organizer and a broadcaster point of view around growing fandom. And how do we get fandom around collegiate esports to look more like traditional sports across the board? And, um, you know, that helps us go out and sell sponsorships in the place of which trickles down to all our member schools that we represent. But when we go to brands and we can't check that box of, you know, a billion impressions and a million views, um, we still are challenged with selling those sponsorships. So my last and final is, do we have any secrets around how to grow fandom or grow community on let's just start with on campus i mean I got the big one real quick okay best way to grow community food nights has nothing to do with playing the game i'll give you a real life example we used to do dollar burger night at the university of cincinnati we would just go out to bar louis we used to have bar dollar burgers every wednesday we'd post in in that this time it was facebook groups tell people where to show up six people 12 people showed up the first week by the third month we had 40 plus people coming and it was the biggest revenue night of the week for bar louis every week purely because of us but we had friendships we had relationships we had roommates we had all sorts of great wonderful Hello, everybody, and welcome back, of course, to Esports U. Today, we're bringing you all the Valorant action your heart could desire. Alongside me today, once again, is Orbital. My brother, we were here last week. I'm excited to be doing this with you again, of course. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing okay. Hopefully, my camera decides to uh, to hold steady this time around. I, I believe I had flickering last time, but I'm excited. It's the week eight. It's the end of the regular season, and teams are slowly starting to lock in their position. So I'm very, very excited to see where everyone sit, uh, sits down and where everyone kind of spirals out as we move into those playoff spots and where the regular season doesn't matter as much. Yeah, of course. And I mean, like for especially one team here, the regular season doesn't really matter at all anymore. If we're looking at Pace University, of course, coming here, they're seven and oh, they're kind of just kicking back, leaning back and going, yeah, you know what we did? We took care of business. We got this one. It's kind of a formality. We know we're going to be in playoffs for John Jay. However, they're coming in here at three and four. That win is going to be pivotal for their playoff positioning because you do not want to be facing a one seed when you go into the playoffs, of course. 
Yeah, and I mean, even with the 3.5, I understand that the uh, ECAC has different styles of how they do, uh, depending on the size of the uh, of the playoff group, it, it does vary in terms of who makes it and who doesn't. The thing is, is no matter what, in any league, having a lower end win record, having a 3.4, 3.5 or anything like that, does hurt your chances a little bit. So the fact that they're sitting at a 3-4 at almost that chopping block moment does cause a little bit of worries. So as you said, we need to see them step up here. We need to see that they can at least break even across the season and really give themselves a chance to get themselves through the door and not have to rely on someone else falling out. Yeah, and that's one of the things, right? You want to have your future in your own hands, and it's very pivotal, of course, and this is going to be a huge test for John Jay College, of course, here. But talking about a huge test, we're going to get into the map picks and bands, of course, and it looks like no no comps are really going to be tested here. It's pretty standard. Once again, College Valorant, we favor Haven, we favor Bind, and we stand Ascent 24-7. <laughs> and those are the three maps we are going to see. Of course, Pearl and uh, Pearl and Breeze being banned by John Jay College, and Icebox and Fractured being banned out by Pace just we don't like anything new we do not like new we like to hide in our holes of safety here and uh, i and i understand it right if you're comfortable with these maps that's great and it's very very appropriate i'm just surprised to see pace following suit right with teams that usually are sitting at the top of the table where they don't have too much to lose you will actually see them branch out. You will see them force some innovation, uh, whether letting through that Pearl or letting through that Icebox, which honestly at this point should be in your standard rotation. Uh, it's surprising to see Pace taking this very seriously. And again, I also attribute that to the fact that for this squad, they are sitting at the cream of the crop, but they want to stand even head higher, right? If you go ahead and take this series, if you take it 8-0, that's a step further in the first place direction, right? You don't want to sit at second or third when you could have had first. I agree with you to some extent, but on the same side of the coin, you know you're going to get Haven or, or, or you know, Haven or Ascent as the decider anyway. So why not run that <laughs> map? And if you drop it, oh, well, who cares? You know we're going to be good on Bind. We know we're going to be good on Ascent or Haven. And so it kind of just comes down to that for me. I am surprised, however, to see Viper as the lone controller here for Pace University for Bind. Typically, we see that in, you know, a double controller comp where you can have those dome smokes kind of covering Heaven. But eh, a little bit of a surprise there. Yeah, keeping it nice and steady. Uh, we do see that Brimstone down below as well to kind of complement it. So uh, for Pace, uh, they are going to be very happy about that setup. And again, it's a very defensive setup. And I think it's all around a great way to kick things off. Again, for Pace, it's more about not showing your cards. If you practice Harbor, great. If you practice a lot of this stuff, maybe they're just hiding their pocket picks and playing stock standard just to show that they can. It, it is really on uh, J excuse me my brain does not want to work right now on john jay uh to bring out that kind of craziness and i've seen some people try some amped up moments i've seen some uh i believe odin's come out on this map i've seen some weird weird shenanigans that have thrown me for a loop so really look to john jay to set an unprecedented tempo and if they can't pace should be on pace to go ahead and track all over this map I see what you did there. I, yeah, I'm picking I up what you're putting down. So, <laughs> all right, we've hit our dad pun quota of the day already in the pre-show. <laughs> Love to see that. You know, you have two boomers on the cast right now being brought to you. Um, I'm ready to see Chambo or Chamber just ego Chamber. peak everything, right? Chambo. <laughs> yeah. We're having we're having a lot of fun here, but yeah, absolutely. I, I like I'm, it, I'm, I'm right? ready like, to see the ego peaks. Like obviously, yeah. on top of a truck, that's just money right there, right? You're good for one. <laughs> But nobody's on a site so we're gonna have to see this b hit come out of course from john j right here as they're hitting long obviously that guiding light gonna already spot one so they know there's somebody around here at least that short viper wall is gonna take care of both hookah and be long so a nice little wall there to kind of start this off kind of knowing of course where john j is gonna hit first and this first entry gives a lot of information, right? It tells us, you know, how aggressive the teams want to play, uh, how willing they are to take those chances. And so far, JJC are willing to pull the pin, but you can go ahead and see here, Pace taken two before losing one of their own. So very nice stalwart defense to kick things off. And the defense is great. All the brimstone smoke still available, of course, as well for John Jay. So they're going to be able to get at least that uh, that garden area smoked off, which is so pivotal for a retake. Is Zen trying to clear things out and just gets mollywopped by a frenzy right there, but somehow holds on with three HP. And now it's funeral coming in against one. Going to be able to take them down with the classic. And that is a solid retake from Pace to start us off. And we did see some 
Some things that I will point out maybe later that I don't want to see again, but as you said, Pace did very well on the retake, right? Playing within the smoke, swinging at the same time, I think it's very appropriate to call out that they were able to run three members from that back corner, which is usually quite difficult uh, to enter in just from a single, uh, single opening. So the fact that they were able to pull that off without having anyone circle uh, around on B-side elbow gives me a lot of confidence that Pace know how to play the retakes pretty much uh, at any point. Of course, with weapons in hand, this next round, the anti-eco, feels a lot better, right? You know they're going to be real happy about it, but Pace are going to try and do this without losing a single member or only dropping one is the main goal here. It certainly is the main goal, but three already stacked on A site, so it's going to be tough sledding ahead, and we do see that chamber on top of Truck not able to get one, but there's a Guardian in hand as well with, honestly, in my opinion, the best skin just because that scope is so brilliant. It just feels like it zooms in more than anything else. As Spike we're going to see, of course, the trademark taken out. Funeral's going to be able to pick off one from heaven. Roman just sitting here in the brimstone smoke, in that sky smoke. Going to see if they're going to be able to get anything from it. Zen taking out two. You said they couldn't drop a gun. It's looking like that's the case right now. I mean, they don't, they don't really need to worry. They know exactly where the last player is. And it's a quick spray down. So, again, pace keeping it steady here and making themselves look very, very controlling and huge props again for the side of pace to hold off on the upper rungs. This has been a B and then a check by JJC. They say, okay, we tried B last time. We tried A this time. B side will most likely feel a little bit more uh, accessible from what we saw last time, right? You lost a couple members on the entry. So chase over to B side, try and flush them out and try and get yourself uh, a quick plant and a great setup. So you can already see it there with guns in hand, multiple, uh, very happily, the phantoms and vandals. And then I think an extra, uh, extra no, it is just vandals and phantoms. My brain does not want to work right now. So pace are going to have a little bit of a rough time. And that's why they are four stacking here by the teleporter. Oh my, the swing throughs and almost immediate rotation Ooh. coming to shower. That's definitely good to see. Kiwi and Funeral, oh. however, are gonna find two. That's absolutely massive right there. So they're gonna know. Oh, Funeral, oh my what? Gosh. Nah, bro, no. Orbital, that didn't happen. Uh, it definitely did, we just watched it. <laughs> Funeral making sure that everyone presses F to pay their respects. And I, I mean, this is, we, we expected something of the sort. Right, we did expect something of the sort from a top team like Pace. We didn't expect it to be this harsh. Uh, nigh close to getting another flawless in three rounds, and they make it look easy. Funeral sitting on four kills so far, Cidic on top with five. I mean, I, I can't even say anything about their defense. It was just clean, right? Clean shots all the way through. It wasn't like their positioning was emphatic or they had some crazy crossfire literally just clean gunplay yeah i mean how, how does funeral find a guardian headshot through a smoke is my question that is uh that is definitely something we're going to see the same setup again and we're also going to see that actually that guiding light hit roman so they know somebody is over on b just going to help out a little bit but this is a pretty heavy default of course coming out from john jay they have to slow down the pace a bit though because on their on their aggressive hits they've just been overrun with solid gunplay like you were mentioning earlier so i like the change of pace here to be a little bit slower maybe find a pick you see chamber there and Bangus actually going to get one in shower, so that's going to be a nice pick just to open up the scoring. Ooh. And oh, XR is going to get one as well. Zen's going to get a trade here, but it doesn't really seem to matter much. That spike's going to be picked up, and it's looking like it's going to be a pretty big B hit. And oh, oh my, thrifty inbound. I mean, I don't know where this pace came from, especially with pistols, but it's working. In this situation, you've had the best chance that you've had in a while to get a round. You're not into a 1v2. You're happy. You picked up weapons on your own. You're fine. You know where the last person is as well. Zen is going to try and spray through the box. Doesn't get any damage whatsoever. It's not going to have to peek, but peeks one. No, Zen. Don't, don't steal this away from JJC. Don't do this to them. This is going to be heartbreaking. One more to go, and you peek, and you swing, and Darius says no thank you. It is a thrifty with the 3k. JJC, it was close, but I mean, with only pistols, you'll take that. You certainly take that with a bunch of sheriffs in hand. And sometimes it just takes a Deagle Demon round, you know? Sometimes you just got to relax. And the one thing I've noticed when we see a lot of teams on these eco rounds with sheriffs is that they take their time with their shots, right? They're not rushing. They're not panicking. They know, hey, I have to hit ahead or I die. So they take a little bit more time on it. And that can kind of bring them back into the gun rounds with not rushing it once again with their aim and maybe seeing some more success. But now, Darius... Actually, our top frag, you can see the glow on that uh, on that champion's phantom, of course. That's always great to see. But Zen, just super aggressive positioning here in a cubby. 
And I think Bengus is ready for this one, but I don't think they're going to challenge <laughs> it by any means. I mean, that boom bot, it's not in a direction that I think sent it into the corner. So false sense of security it. here. And I mean, we've seen teams get a little bit too overconfident with, uh, I want to say, failed information. So I am a little bit worried, and they are chasing in. They say they have the perfect opportunity. They have all the smokes laid out. But Funeral is hiding in the smoke here. Again, the Headhunter could be this absolute monstrosity of a play. Orbital Strike is going to come in, closing off a little bit of a branch of opportunity. And JJC have routed out appropriately, made sure that they spaced out. Everyone getting a crossfire opportunity. The 4v4 retake typically favors the attackers. We're going to see if that holds true right here. I mean, Funeral's still on top of Truck. How have you not cleared oh. him out here? Madman is going to get completely obliterated. Ravage is going to find one here as well. And both of the remaining members for John Jay are off site. This is going to be so difficult to retake from this position as they just start spraying down. They're going to be found inside the smoke. Of course, the snake bite going to do all the work, even though it's two headshots. You could have hit them with bodies. It wouldn't have mattered at that point. Honestly, the fact that JGC had so much time to set up and yet they were still routed by pace, I think is very, very important to note, right? Because I got to agree, right? When it comes to these situations uh, where the attackers do have a little bit of time in the 4v4 uh, or even in a 3v3, I think it, it still lends itself to the attackers uh, being able to set up a retake advantage, right? The fact that Funeral was allowed to play on top of Box that nicely, on top of the truck, with no problems whatsoever, be able to call down the two or the force and just say, yeah, cool, I'll take a kill, they that should almost play. never Let's be allowed. Play. So Pace finding these opportunities, finding these golden moments to take a victory, and now Roman again on this Sheriff is going to try and make the impossible possible again. John Jay just needs to use Sheriffs every round at this point. Like, <laughs> I can't explain it to you. That's going to be a good flash right there. Funeral's going to turn this one, though. Peek back log. So they have that intel, of course. And, you know, chamber with an operator on B long is kind of one of those places that you just expect them to be, right? The top of truck is a little bit more aggressive. Doesn't typically lend itself to clearance, but you're going to see a nice spot right here by Arcus going to be just kind of peeking that heaven. Is that Brimstone just sitting there, just not even daring to come out of it? Obviously, hearing that Tour de Force pop to the beginning of the round. And the fact that JJC are still taking this slow, they have learned again, right? Uh, you said it earlier, the change of pace, making sure that they take their time, set up their shots, kind of breathe and steady. Their aim is very, very important for them. And right now they're doing the same. Of course, the paint shell does go out, slows, um, execute here into the A site with a 1-4. They should have plenty to work with, and the main one that you want to look for is, of course, that two of the fours that they have in hand. Are they actually going to try and utilize it? Are they going to pressure in? 25 seconds left. I mean, they're shooting. They are giving away the information, and Roman says, give me a second. That's all it takes, though, to be able to get on site. We're going to see the Raise Nightfall potentially going down here as well. It's going to... Does it hit the Brimstone in heaven is the question? It does not. So Brimstone's not cleared, but those shots will at least note his position as he sprays through. Of course, the Brimstone smokes. Those dome smokes that are actually all the way full, so it's harder to get a kill on somebody. This is some aggressive positioning, but I really like it right here by Bangus. He's going to oh. be found, though. It's a great shot by Kiwi. We saw them end the last round with two straight headshots, and this is just going to continue, of course, as Pace tries to retake with an operator, which is going to be difficult. And two more. One enemy remaining. I mean, I'm almost thinking you just save here on the end, but with nothing else to worry about, it's a second thrifty, and I think you're right. I think you're right, Visionary. You're thinking real far into the future here, and I love it. Just play Sheriffs. JGC, why are you even buying weapons, right? Like, there's no point to buy weapons. Just play Sheriffs. You're doing great. And I mean, and honestly, I will say that again. They were able to win that one with Sheriffs pretty much only in the early rounds. Took two kills and still came out with three members alive. That's ridiculous to my, uh, to me. Uh, I mean, absolutely. It, it just comes down to, again, you like you just have to reset yourself because after those first two rounds, you're kind of sweating you out. You get guns the first time. You're like, hey, yo, we're going to come in guns blazing. We have the advantage. And then you just whiff your shots, right? But whenever you're able to actually slow down, use that sheriff and search for the head, it just kind of resets you a little bit. And that's why, obviously, I like playing chamber so much personally because you have that sheriff every round to kind of do that with. But it's just it's ridiculous to me that two sheriff rounds are completely there and now you kind of have them on the ropes this slow pace has been working out for you you're not letting john j be too aggressive obviously viper's playing very aggressive on the long but they're not going to get caught it's just one of those interesting things that i love seeing and i also love seeing aggressive positioning from chambers you see arcus try to take cubby once again well you see here's the thing is we've already established that jjc are going to lose 
because they don't have shares, right? They're not running the shares. So I mean, I mean, that's how it goes, right? That's we we've we've sent it through the ringer. We formed our hypothesis, and now we're gonna see it in action once again, right? This is gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. But still, great first blood coming in here once again. Pace going to hold on to that one. And with the Viper Spit actually going down on B long, it's stalling out this check that JGC were hoping to play down. So they're still trying to figure out if they want to go A or B. And because of that, they lose another member. Ah, it's just, you know, you're... It's the problem with taking a lot of time, but that's going to be great right there by Roman. Able to get one. Are they going to be able to get a second? We're going to see the C's come through as well. It's actually going to grab one as the plant goes down. They are aware that one's in teleporter and the God nade coming from spawn. It's a great nade right there just to get a little bit of chip damage. Always so vital there. It's funeral just looking here, trying to get one that's capped on site. Not going to be able to find them. So we go in and there's Darius once again with a great frag and elbow. This is just, again, getting so down to the wire and well done by JJC. They hold steady. They keep it clean. And again, slow and steady wins the race. And now it's on pace to figure out, well, we're just kind of letting them roll over, right? We're letting them roll over us. And we have to figure out a way uh, to appropriately play for this. They don't really have the econ. You can see uh, Ra uh, Raven on the bottom side working with only about 1,400. So... If they decide to buy or decide to save, either one I think is going to be good. But pace again, they were up three rounds. Now they're only down or they're only up one. And that is a very rough feeling. I love seeing the ebbs and flows of Valorant and how people. Oh, my gosh. The aggression coming out of the no, It's a Rosa ult. It doesn't find anything. There is almost no damage on any of the members of JJC as they go in to clear this out. And that was so darn aggressive and pace not able to find any value off the showstopper. That's a massive L for them on a save round because they they, they utilized it. And now it's just gone. And Zen's going to get one with the the boombot out of where i just this is this is ridiculous so far boombot from the smoke funeral sending it with bullets this time it's the util and now zen is right back into it hard pushing in gets one but on top of the molly i mean darius isn't going to be able to do too much of course you don't have to they're just stalling time out and now pace i mean they got to push in right you don't really have a choice you only have a few more moments left cynic is going to find one might look for another one but it's going to have to hide around the corner I mean, JJC, they're playing this about as well as they can. Again, low information, low util to play with. And Raven, oh, you're stuck in this corner. What can you do? Are you going to get the blind? Blind doesn't really go off. And now a check. Down goes I'm Mad Man. And that should be the round for Pace. Well done on their end. I, I Apparently, we're just seeing save rounds come through and be more vital than any buy <laughs> round has ever been. And sometimes College of Valor just be like that. That's all I can say. You had a stinger, some sheriffs, and you're going to make it work. So, obviously, props to Pace. You said they have to find out a way. Well, it's kind of just overwhelming them and flooding them on site. And I think that's mm -hmm. that's one thing that John Jay needs to really take into account is we've seen them lose A twice now after planting just because, obviously, they lost some members that were fighting on site. But if you're not going to double swing those members knowing you have gun advantage, you can't just play in cubby and in shower and expect to be successful. You have to double swing off your team and try to get those trades because you know you have the gun advantage. The low HP is going to favor you regardless. Yeah, you ain't playing CSGO. You don't have to worry about shooting your teammate, right? You ain't going to get banned oh. here. You just shoot through them because that's how Valorant works, right? Use them as a meat shield. I've actually said this to a few, uh, few players that I talked to, uh, just for funsies. Feel free to shoot through them. As long as you're not lined up head-to-head, -head, you're fine, right? Use them as a meat shield. Use them as a body block and trade a little bit more so than you would normally like. And, and Raven, realizing that that might be the wrong thing to do, is going to be able to trade out one for one. Zin is actually going to be the one to pick it up. Roman now into the corner saying, hey, give me just a few more moments. And again, it's a hard shift back and forth. The shower is bringing so much blood here as Zin takes a second. I mean, Zen there, the, just the spray control, right? The recoil control. Oh my gosh, oh. Kiwi. That, is that legal? Like, what is that swing to a perfect wall bang headshot? Are you kidding me? It's just right now, Pace, this is gunplay, is kind of back on point, but XR is going to find another one here. Going to be a little bit awkward, of course, as this is a 2v2. They're taking sight. They're coming through. There is the ultimate, of course, coming out. The orbital strike, able to get one off of the plant. And the Molly as well, going to get them off the site. Uh, this is just a great delay right here, of course, from Pace, just to buy off some of that time and potentially get some chip damage. Unfortunately, they didn't find a lot of it, and the Orbital Strike still on John Jay's side. 
Oh, that's a rude one. Little bit of an orbital strike coming down and giving the defenders a bit of a rougher time here. But of course, it opens up the opportunity for that stim back. And I'm mad. I mean, you're looking in the smoke. This is going to be a swing, hard swing out as Cidic takes the mirror matchup and pace push themselves 2 6, a very important round for them to pick up. They retain two the weapons. They're for. able to carry it over. And the three round lead, you secured at least a decent first half. Yeah, and I mean, it bind is really weird, right? Because for some teams, it's just extremely attacker sided, and some teams, it's just complete like, hey, we can defend this map with the best of them. And I'm interested to see how John Jay is going to be on defense, right? Because obviously, the double controller came out for pace. You said it was a more defensive lineup. They're doing what they need to do. But if John Jay pulls out five, I mean, maybe we're talking about this is probably swinging the other way with them on defense. It's just bind is such an awkward map because there is no mid control to take care of. And so it's either a heavy default or a heavy execute, and that's all you can really do. There's not a lot of variety within, uh, of course, what you can do strategic-wise, as that oh. is definitely something you can do. Take an aggressive angle with Chamber and find yourself a pick. That always seems to work. Funeral living up to the name right there. That is <laughs> a brutal opening, to say the least. And as you said, a little bit aggressive or a little bit passive. You take your pick here and pace so far. Have aligned themselves appropriately. JJC is saying, we got, we got to do something here, right? We got to figure out something to do here. Sending three with one fading even further back. All four stacked on this side. Pace are not taking the bait. And I do like this, right? Pace have worked in some of those angles where they do like to push up B long. They like to push hookah and try and get a jump advantage. But JJC have met them with a pretty stalwart, a steady gameplay. So Pace are like, okay, we'll wait you out. Now's the chance for you to play real nice and slow all over again. And it's not going to work the exact same way. So I like the way Pace is kind of challenging JJC to that battle. I definitely agree with you there. As we're going to see the Prowler and, of course, the Guiding Light come in. We might see a Nightfall come out here. No, it's not going to be there. Roman's going to get fine Kiwi. Funeral's going to be blinded here. He somehow turns that Flash, but he is under siege right now on the backside. And Madman's going to be able to take him out. Now it's a 4v3. Make that a 3v3. Zen fights two. 2v2 now. Zen is just popping off. And Madman is as well. The spike is planted. Whoa. But somehow, Ravagence is going to be able to get that pick. And it's going to be 7 to three right now we're kind of trending in a certain direction especially with john jay their econ should be a little bit weaker coming into this next round but i mean it's sheriff so the win who cares <laughs> yeah I, i'm sorry at this point jgc are stronger with sheriff so i mean we're not we're not giving them the benefit of the doubt here they are going to work with plenty though you were talking about the econ being a little bit rough they still have enough to buy out you can see about 5.9 on the side of roman so they are able to scrape together another buy round with two rounds left you're hoping to secure any a number of opportunities, but the big question is, where is Funeral, right? That that operator has been a little bit of a thorn in your side. The kills may not be incredible, but it's the it's the positions that the kills are made in, right? It's kicking off and killing off that uh, original initiator, and just like now, you can see holding him off inside of showers. No one was killed this time, but they can't move, and it means that Bangus is going to be found out by Zin. Uh, it just it continues happening right like zen just finds an opening pick and it makes all the difference in the world and now funeral just gets to chill back here and hold shower like basically like his life depends on it because it does but they were extremely lucky that of course the fade was the first one to push on jjc with that stinger right because that stinger is such rapid fire that you're going to be looking at potentially losing that operator and that's not something you want to do so you get the instant tp you get some chip damage and you see them rotating all the way through spawn here they're going to be running into that sky and viper combo which is honestly it hasn't done a great job at holding the site but it's done a great job of getting enough chip damage to allow the retake to be successful yeah and for this comp i mean you're really hoping jjc will be able to explode come their defensive position so right now the main thing is just trying to get to that fourth round maybe fifth keep it competitive instead of going down nine three in the hole roman is going to be leading left. this one though and again working down the timer this has so far not really yielded a direct advantage in one way or another but the entries that jjc do do under pressure do feel a little bit more well executed they feel a little bit smoother on their entries and right now it's pace to do the same on their own retake here in the 5v4 
Yep, and I mean, the most important position right now is going to be this elbow position, of course, as this is going to get dogged out and Roman's going to give that up. Here comes the showstopper on the other side. Zen's going to find one. Are they going to be able to find two? No spam through the smoke by Madman. That's a great job of just being able to find on the minimap and get some sprays down. And I'm pretty sure he got some ship damage on another one as well as the defuse starting to come out right now. Xara is going for the wall bangs, gets a little tag here, but they know that he's there. This is going to be just a riot. And somehow, some way, two people are trying to find everybody. Arceus oh. going to find two. Ooh, but Kiwi's gonna get the refrag. Oh my, I thought Arxius might have had that one, but unfortunately, not able to find the last two. It's a great effort, but this is definitely last trending towards that 9-3, unless the JJC pistol round does it again. And to say that 9-3 is gonna be the end-all be-all is, that's not what we're saying here, right? That We're not saying yeah. that JJC are gonna lose outright. I mean, there's a reason the 9-3 curse was so prevalent for so long, right? There's a reason Still there's is. a stigma around it. Uh, well, yeah, but, you know, <laughs> in, in College Valorant, that's not, you know, we don't believe in superstitions until it actually happens to us. Then we, then we swear by it, right? What we're seeing right now is, again, JJC just trying to add a little bit more to the safety net, you right? Play, the fact that you're going to be behind moving into uh, in the, the second half is already well known. It's just trying to lay on a few more, uh, at least one more round in your pocket. You feel a little bit better. You're not constrained just to the pistols, right? Of course, with the opening fragment like that, Pace are just like, yeah, we're good. We, we don't even have to worry about this right now. We are still one of the kings here in our division, and we're going to keep it that way. It's just... I, I understand taking the aggressive positioning. I don't understand the reposition to try to get that off, but that's a great frag right there by Darius. Gonna be able to find revengeance right there with one. As Funeral gonna get blind and Roman's gonna take on to sight and they know where this Viper is as well. So this is gonna be dangerous for certain as they have to come and basically retake out of their own ultimate unless they're gonna come around it. We're gonna see, of course, the Orbital Strike come out as well, trying to potentially remove that Viper from play. It's not gonna happen and Zen's gonna find two just sneaks through the back of sight. You can't let that happen. One enemy remaining. Just so ridiculous. And Zing gets a util kill, making a 3k and looking for one more. You do get it, and it's now down to a 1v1. They're both going to sneak right by each other, but Kiwi is able to hear them. And through the teleporter, you go. So this 1v1 left. is going to be nasty. And depending on the entries, Roman is going to try and get the plant. If you're met right away, it is a boon and advantage over to Pace. If you get the plant down and are able to shift away from that corner spike, huge advantage to JJC. This 1v1. It's, the latter has now occurred is going to land in favor of the JJC squad here in the last round of the half. Oh, this is this is definitely phenomenal positioning right now. Kiwi might have actually I mean they checked you haul are they going to sit there? Answer's going to be no the tap. They are for certain that somebody is holding this, of course. As we've seen so many times from JJC. This they've held it from shower and right now Roman is just big braining the sheer f oh, oh they spotted the gun yeah. barrel and know that they're not defusing oh my roman oh, you got hurts. this buddy yeah yeah that is that is galaxy brained right there that is beautiful <laughs> the well-timed rotate again very very nicely done from jjc's side and i mean that gun barrel it, it's one of those moments that really hurts you know that would have happened if they ran sheriffs you see that you see that if you had the sheriff the barrel wouldn't have been on long and you would have been able to hide right see, yep. big brain right there but in all honesty, they'll take it, right? Very nicely done by Darius. Being able to hold it down and still get a fourth in means that this opening pistol for JJC, if they lose, is not the end of the world. They will have to sit against double digits, most likely, but they have a way to fight back. They have a second chance moving into this half. I almost feel like every single member at JJC should have bought a sheriff this round. Like, what's util? We have guns. Yeah, just, <laughs> just you know what? We don't care anymore. We don't just care. It's all it. headshots. Just YOLO by it. All headies <laughs> all day. Like, I I don't know, but they, I mean, their sheriff rounds were very successful. It's going to be, of course, a good blind here by Darius as well with that guiding light to be able to at least spot one. But this is going to be an extremely heavy default for Pace to start us off on this pistol round. Yeah. Uh, By the way, Visionary, did you know there is a trick to heading headshots? Uh. I don't, I don't know if you've heard this. You don't aim for the head. You don't envision the head. You envision shooting above the body. Did you know that? Hmm, that is uh, some CSGO wisdom if I've ever heard it. Yeah, uh, I was very surprised about this fact, and I said, no wonder I can't hit Jack because uh, <laughs> I'm aiming for the head. So I'm going to have to try that in my next one. But I thought it, I thought it was an interesting little tidbit because we have Sheriffs, right? Like that is the one tap gods all the way around. But Pace going ahead with the larger caliber and larger clip weapons. The Frenzy is making their entrance and mowing down three people. The Frenzy is... I, I don't understand why people more people don't utilize the Frenzy, especially on a map like Bind where you're going to be aggressive, especially blast backing in. 
Like, it makes you harder to hit, especially with that ghost. Just take the frenzy, take your land, and see where you can go. There's another one for Zen. I, I was going to say give him a 4K, but Funeral's going to take his as well. He's like, I'm <laughs> not going to not get one here, as we've seen for yeah. most of the rounds with that operator. You know, it's just like, yeah, I got my one. We're good. We're chilling. Yeah. Uh, Funeral always needs to stack at least a few caskets uh, in the game. Like, you, you got to take <laughs> at least a few to be able to pay rent. Like, that that's what you got to do here. Oh my, I, who is writing the obituaries is my question for Pace. Here Pace. lies the guy that walked in front of my crosshair. I didn't know his name, but he, he served me well. Like it's gotta it's gotta it's gotta be Ravages, right? Or Ravages, right? Like oh. it has to be with that kind of name. They're definitely writing the obituaries for funeral. That would Oh my gosh. They have a side business. It's an actual business that they have, right? They're just as soon as they leave Valorant World, they're just like, this is perfect, this is great. Oh, man. Taking a look here, this is going to be JJC working with only pistols. And, and I know we know what they can do on there uh, with their pistols. But again, they're not the ones aggressing. That's the dangerous part, right? They're the ones having to hold and wait. And Pace are going to be the ones with these SMGs kind of running you down. So expect some heavy hitters from Pace. Don't expect JJC to uh, take, this one, uh, take this one lying down. But it's an uphill battle. And Pace are just like, do we go A? Do we go B? Either way, we're going to get some kills. And the only noise that's been made so far is shooting the haunt that, of course, came in shower. And I, as soon as they're about to, you know, explode on site here, it's a decent Viper setup here to at least delay that long push. And they get the haunt back just because of all the time. So they know it's a long. I like this double swing right here as well. Unfortunately, Kiwi's going to be able to get the frag and get some spray damage as well. This is going to be a definite plant. You see the Sky Hill coming in as well, just to kind of bolster everybody back up to 100 HP. It's already a 3v5 for JJC. For JJC, I mean, you're, you, you got to look for at least one or two. I don't even know if you actually go for the defuse. You're just trying to find something, but Funeral, again, sends someone to the Shadow Realm. And then Lantern, in Lantern, you get two shots off, but you tried your best. You do take one. So Darius was able to finish off uh, Zen, but Siddick is going to allow the Team Ace to go through. So every single member on Pace's side, play make kill for themselves. And now we get into the meat and potatoes of things. So remember, Pace in game uh, in the first half were able to take three in a row. They were able to take three in a row off the rip. So that was the opening pistol. That was the anti eco and the bonus. Situation arising here. I don't think Pace are going to allow another sheriff win if uh, if it comes down to it. So this is very important. JJC do need to win this round out. They do need to show that they can still at least take the bonus. I do like the idea of this double swing and shower, though, as the Prowler's going to come out. It's going to tag Ravagence right there as Darius just calmly fans himself off on B-Long. <laughs> I always love seeing the fans come out. It always just cracks me up. Ravagence looking for some danger here. Bangus Bong notices that there is a ton in shower. Trying to get that away. Oh, my. Wow. Where did Zen come from? Just runs in and Sid going to be able to take one out as well. Bangus Bong at least gets one to trade out as Roman here. Having to fall back, wait for their team to be able to re-aggress. I think they came around A mid. Like, I, I think they just wrapped around and then uh, satcheled away across the showers. Yeah. That was a little bit ridiculous. I'm going to be honest, that was a little bit ridiculous. And crazy as it seems, it, it kind of worked, right? It broke open the site for Pace to enter in. And now JGC are going to try to hold their own. A lot of value coming in here, though. Trades, one, two, and three. Darius, though, going to mow down two with a very nice transfer. One more is needed, though, and Funeral is able to take it, but a beautiful blind right in there. But you still get it. Are you kidding me? No. Funeral. Um, yep. That, that just happened, my man. That just happened. Funeral just popped off at the end there. The Guardian, the one-tap machine. We were talking about how good, of course, JJC was with the sheriffs and we're gonna see a guardian take down three at the very end yeah please give us that replay this is disgusting of course the spray transfer misses everything there just readjusts gets flashed able to pop off darius immediately and just goes for the that, body here oh. able to get everybody that's that's just wild and honestly i i do feel i madman had an opportunity but you saw the a little bit of jitters right there, right? A little bit of hesitation. You were like, oh, man, someone's coming towards me. And then went back to defuse. So no weapon came out there at the end. So it's a great clutch up by the side of Funeral. And then a little bit of mistake on the side of JJC. Thwarting what they were hoping was a very solid round for themselves. And Pace now sitting on 11. They are feeling a lot more emboldened in how they fight this. They should know that the weapons are very low 
on JJZ's side, which might make them a bit more of a threat. But it's just the slow defaults, right? Just trying to find those picks, trying to find uh, JJC uh, sleeping on the edge. JJC aren't biting either. They've had one too many run-ins. Right now with the two, three are holding their own. And they're certainly doing a good job right now as that Hawk, that Guardian Light is going to spot one. We're going to see, of course, all the Viper utility come back, try to delay the A long, and Ravagen's going to be able to take out the Boombot over by Bengus Bong. As we're going to see this right now, of course, some Sheriffs, some other utility. It's looking like this is going to be a B hit for the most part. And I think the most dangerous part about this is you still have the Orbital Strike if you're paced. So you can essentially guarantee yourself this round, potentially, is Zen going to find another one he's just been Jeez. so deadly on the entry just absolutely magnificent entering for their team this is this is just ridiculous pace are giving us a taste of what we could see in the playoffs as well very nice gameplay very snap readjustments as well right they have yet to be forced to make major adjustments but every time they've lost around it feels like they always know what they did wrong right they always feel like hey we know exactly what we did wrong we're not going to let it happen again and we're going to keep you in suspense Match point. so pace keeping themselves at a steady run and now taking a look they granted themselves this opportunity full buyouts on jjc but an early early conclusion for game number one if this team is able to take one more and you know what I love about Pace is the fact that they're defaulting heavy at the start of every round just to make sure that nobody's playing too aggressive. And then they immediately are decisive and just so great with their takes. Like, it just their orchestrated, their cohesiveness on their aggression onto a site has been absolutely magnificent. Viper Wall being thrown early here. I don't know if this is going to be a fake or not, if they're going to feel something up. But Bang is actually going to be able to get one and trade out Funeral. That's definitely great to see. And here's Zen. That's going to be problems. Oh. And of course, Zen going to find it with a showstopper. They're going to be able to take A site entirely now just because everybody was playing on B or the alive members of JJC were playing on B. <laughs> yeah, I was like, there are a couple dead bodies inside of A that, uh, yeah, would, you right. that would tend to disagree with you, but they don't really have a save right now, right? Take a look we are moving into this and they are trying to haul themselves through the short side and i'm mad man it is able to find one so that's a great shot coming in from a mid and again the flank worked in their favor but Nobody kiwi yet. able to answer in response very very quickly on darius trying to throw out that blind trying to give themselves a little bit of space but again it is a 3v2 another wall goes up and it is going to keep things very cut off revengeance said hey darius you peeked the wrong way arxaris Realizing that they just walked in to the end of this game. 13-4 to pace as they take a commanding game number one. It, it was really just, I mean, their sight takes were just magnificent. Every single time they're sitting there, they're chilling. They're like, hey, they're not getting over aggressive. So let's just decide where we're going to go. Hey, it's going to be B this time. Hey, it's going to be A this time. Perfect coordination. And Zen just opened up the site every single time. He's good for one, potentially good for two. Sometimes we saw three or four. The man was just a mad lad at entering site, always getting that opening frag, just able to open everything up and kind of push the defense, of course, of John Jay off. And when something like that happens, it just becomes more and more difficult to kind of deal with that swing momentum when you have a duelist that is popping off that heavy. Yeah, there is a point where you just kind of sit back and it's like, dang, they have a really good moment right now. They're just on point. They're on fire, whatever you want to say. And yes, you still have to fight back against it, but I do think that pace are just a cut above, right? We talked about their entries on that attacking side. In the defensive, they did so well in holding it down. They knew exactly what to do. They knew every moment, hey, let's go ahead and hold them off here. Hey, we should push at this time, right? They they seem to have fallen back, right? The reading of the opponent, very, very important there. And I think is a partial reason as to why pace looks so good and JJC just look completely outclassed. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to agree with you, of course. And next, we're going to be going to a site that isn't as exec heavy because there's always fallback options in the b site of course in haven but just what we saw at a pace this time was magnificent i expect their takes on on a haven with you know that spread outness of the players on defense there to be even better even more effective and i just have to give a shout out to zen right there because 437 average combat score for that map it's a little ridiculous bro that's all i gotta say so we're gonna definitely have a lot more valorant of course here on esports u for cecc coming up right after this we just got to give ourselves a quick breather so we'll be back after this break hey guys ktad here and just like that another season of ecac esports regular season play 
has come to a close. Over the last eight weeks, we saw a crazy amount of hype competition from some of the best collegiate esports has to offer. And as usual, you guys have me one last time to break it all down and to show you guys what we thought were some of the top plays this week. And honestly, guys, I, I don't have much more to say. Just check it out because I think we've got some really incredible clips here. Let's take a look. In our opening clip, it's Professor Dementium with a straight boot off the stage to kick things off for Bloomfield. Got himself one. Kick back off stage though. But the air dodge is going to be that Bowser. He'll do it again and they'll also bring himself that down smash so he gets quickly back before that top is able to take any sort of advantage. But uh, well, you're gone. The spikes come through. It's clean kick to wrap things up. And well, he's got one. He's got one stock for his troubles. Up next, the duel of Donkers and Robeast have some things to say with this beautiful 1-2 combo to close the door on Albany. Hit the intersection and go straight up in the air for Robeast, who's, who's going to work Central Missouri into the offense. Flip resets a good one. The pass down to Donkers, and he finds the net. A three-goal deficit in Game 3. I got to say, Curtis, it seems like after these two teams came out of Game 2, right? Uh, again... In our next play, who needs to be able to see your enemy when you can just take a educated guess? One for one over towards Catwalk. There's still more where that came from. Myramium is next up. And he will take a couple too many fights. Solsta, as well, is going to be able to take a couple of fights, winning them both. It's 1v3, and Novacorium won't be able to do anything. Johnson, Wales. At number 5, it's Saltonix with this huge flank onto Cole College to secure Temple of Anubis for his team. Right now, it's got to be just destroying it straight up. Maybe of the Coalescence, maybe the Supercharger, but that Retire could just immediately are through. Here's that Rip Tire. It does move Joker, but it could have been a catastrophic play. Now Nightfold is pulled all the way off the boy, and that's an easy one. Tonic's coming in with a triple off of that crucial Rocket Barrage, and that is all of them off the point. Now it's having Joker just to get the touch onto the point. Tracer. Coming back to the Bloomfield versus Keen matchup. It was a clutch finish from Zenipu as he finishes off Brandon without dropping a single stock. No, one more lease on life. Lease on life indeed for Brandon. Looking to hold the ledge, but a recovery from Zenipu. He says second time's the charm. He'll send him to the moon. And once again, Zenipu will not drop a stock. Blast packing our way into the number two spot though. It's a 4K from Butta to cement the lead for Providence College. Back roads around the high ground to try and avoid that oh. as much as possible. Uh, oh my absolute days. Here was me looking for that transcendence to counteract the grab and no, it was just a big fat go button. In comes the pulse bomb. Down goes Sunny Poly Wildcats. I Phil, I can't remember the last time I've seen <laughs> Blast packing our way into the number two spot, though. It's a 4K from Butta to cement the lead for Providence College. Not much more. That tap can't go a long way in, in the latter half, right? Now Retina bringing out that Stimmy, trying to get the opportunity to move the team in forward. Okay, there's that showstopper I was thinking about. It looks like D Nuns is going to have that show stopped. Sal, not particularly far behind. A 4v2. But a really starting to wake up here on the race. Yeah, wow. So impressive. And 4K there just going straight through the entire team like a bulldozer. Will not stop until all are taken down. And in our top play from the last week of regular season play. It is a nail biter last second goal that will keep you guessing until the very end. Loma now leaves their own open. Loma a high pass, you angle it in, but it's just off the top of the goal post. Off the top of the goal post, coming in deep. Matrix able to find something here. The demolition comes through. Seven seconds left for a true game win, but in overtime, 
feeling incredibly likely, but oh, tied no. out of a wide open goal! Whoa! No! No! Orbital, the Waffle Iron has been flipped, and Farmingdale finds themselves up 4-3. Two seconds left on the clock. The only hope for Louisville to win this out is with a kickoff goal. They cannot make a single mistake. Or they will. And with that, I mean, what more do you guys want me to say? It was a crazy week to wrap things up, but it's really just been a crazy season overall with the addition of Division A and what I personally think is some of the most competitive action here in collegiate esports. I mean, what a season and there's only much more to come. With the playoffs starting on April 4th, you guys can expect to see a lot more action that will continue all throughout the month and that will wrap up on the week of April 25th. Now, if you guys want to stay up to date on all of that, make sure you follow us on Twitter at ECAC underscore esports or follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash ECAC underscore esports. Mondays and Tuesdays, matches will be lighting off at 8 p.m. Eastern. On Wednesdays, it is going to be the doubleheader of Rocket League and Overwatch at 7 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you guys are tuned in. And as for me and the rest of the crew behind the scenes that works on not only just the production, but these highlight videos for you guys, we just want to say thank you for joining us for what has been another incredible season. And we look forward to so much more that we're going to Hello and welcome back to Esports U. My name is Visionary One and alongside me is Orbital. Of course, we just watched Pace kind of dismantle John Jay College over on Bind. We're going to get to see them play Haven next. Of course, in this final week of the ECAC, uh, the ECAC conference. I'm definitely excited to be bringing this to you as the teams are now going to play their final game of the regular season. We're going to take a week break and then go right into playoffs after that. Obviously, Pace right now, Orbital. 7-0, and looking to make that 8-0, and and they were just absolutely brilliant on bind with both their defense and their offense. I always like to talk about, you know, there are so many people they can break down every small movement that the teams do, but I'm not that big brain. What I like to take a look at is the style that the team plays and why they are so dominant. There are teams that individuals seem to step up at every single turn, right? There's always a 3K, there's always a 4K here and there, right? And that's what you like to see, you know, it makes for the highlight reels. And then there are some teams that just feel surgical in their movements, and they don't have as many all-star moments, right? Like funerals, funerals, three K uh, to get a to get a clutch out. That's one. But the fact is, is pace just feels surgical. They feel clean in their gameplay. They don't feel like they're putting themselves into a gamble scenario. It's always, hey, we know if we enter this way, we have a 65-70% chance of pulling it off with the util that we have in hand and the people that we currently have alive. That's how they're playing it. It feels very methodical. It feels very clean. And John Jay just feel like a step behind. And after game one, I can I can say that John Jay do not feel as confident with their shots right now. They are swinging. They're eyeing pace. They see him in the crosshairs. But the shots are just not connecting right now. And that's leaving pace with great opportunities. So for John Jay, taking a look at them. I want to see them push us to a game three. I want to see them come out with some crazy stuff here. Is it going to happen? I don't know. I, I, they just need to trade more effectively. We saw a ton of times where we would see, you know, after in a post plant scenario, two players that, you know, don't have that post plant utility, right? They have flashes or they have smokes, but they don't really have anything else. And we just continually saw them playing off site and not trading out their teammates who were on site fighting it when, you know, Pace is bringing four people in for a retake off of, you know, a couple of brimstone smokes on bind. Agent. And then immediately there's just nobody there to try to trade that out. And obviously you're going to lose the 2v4 and then you're stuck in two places where you can't see the bomb. And like, how are you going to successfully play post plan? So I just want to see them rely on each other and trade a little bit more often. Like you said, if they have those opportunities where they have that peaker's advantage, but it doesn't work out in their favor, if you have somebody behind it, you can trade it out and at least even the odds, right? We didn't see a lot of that out of John Jay in the first map, and it's something I definitely think they can improve on. And I mean, they might have the opportunity here, but <laughs> for the first time, I think I actually saw mirrored matchups here. Yeah. I think all the way through, we had complete mirrored agents, and that, again, that lends itself to such different chances, right? Um, so the reason is, is right now, with the number of agents currently in rotation, 
of course you get some unique and uh, uh, variations from different teams, right? Different teams like to run either a fade or they like to run maybe a bit more of the Reyna instead of the Jet, right? There are so many different little increments that we can see. It's, I would say, exceedingly rare now to see two teams decide, hey, we are going to run the exact same composition and be okay with it. And I, I want to just double check before I start talking out my butt. No, these You're are right. complete mirror teams. And and this now comes down to the fact that we're going to see a difference. There are only two differences here. It's difference in how you use the utility and how well you are on the gun duels, right? Because you can't call agent diff. You can't call uh, that a certain agent is just better in a scenario. You're running the exact same compositions. Yeah, it just comes down to being one of those things where who is using utility more effective is Kiwi running a frenzy on chamber. This is interesting and I love it. As the seize is gonna come out, oh. gonna find a ton of value with that frenzy. Oh. Make it, oh my God. And just Kiwi popping off there with three, make it four. The ace <laughs> got stolen, but we just saw a chamber with a frenzy take out four members of JJC. I mean, I mean, we said it before, right? JJC, they see first, they don't pull the trigger first, and Kiwi just ran with it. Kiwi was like, I got this, guys. Just give me a sec. Let me reload once, and we'll be fine. So well done. And pace on this aggressive okay. side, on this attacking side, are going to give us a landmark pacing that I don't think we've seen in quite some time, right? And this is something that I hope teams uh, adjust a little bit more to for the right reason. They're taking shots. It's very different than they're playing passive to allow an opponent to get into their space so they can take him out, right? Uh, to lure them into the crossfire. Playing scared is something that you do not ever want to see in your team. And if Pace picks up on that, if JJC are actually playing scared, they're playing very passive and in these corners just because they're not confident in their shots. Pace are going to have a glorious time, right? They can run, running, guns blazing, and not give an absolute crap in the world. Yeah, and it just comes down to being one of those things, right? Like this round, we're just not going to count it, right? Because they're on pistols. So it's just kind of one of those things. But I, also one thing I want to note is every single member of Pace has switched roles. Uh, that's something that's a little different to me as well. Uh, the next time we have the scoreboard, I'll kind of bring it up compared to the last match, but... This hold during A, I mean, you have to be so antsy, right? And you know that you have the advantage because Haven is so spread out. There's the first spot right there. Going to be able to find it. Of course, it's Kiwi being able to f come off of Siddick's utility. There's Kiwi once again. Uh, okay, I uh, just chamber entry now. That, that's all it is. We have, we have a raise. We don't even need it this map. We're just going to go ahead and entry chamber every single time, and it's going to be effective. Oh, man. Uh, you, you remember what I said about Pace not feeling like they always have an all-star, feeling like they're more coordinated? Some of the players heard that and took it a little personally, I think. They just, they're Last popping off standing. left and right. Look at that. Can we, don't get another. No. Back to back. Not just back to back. It, yes, it was. It, I want to say it was flawless on both ends, and I don't think uh, round one was. Back to back. Yeah. yeah. 4Ks. Yep. And flawless rounds. It was Nobody, flawless. Uh, oh my yeah. gosh. So okay. Kiwi was... Okay, I'm just going to run this down real quick while yeah, we're still in the pregame. Please break it down. <laughs> Kiwi was on Viper last game, right? Ravages was playing Sky. Funeral was playing Chamber. Siddick was playing Brimstone. And Zin was playing Race. Last match. Look at them now. Like, I love just it. everybody switched roles. They're like, you know what? We're just going to flex. We're going to, you know, work on our comp. We're going to see if we can find anybody else that can maybe do something more strategic. Or maybe this is just what they run and they switch up this often just to kind of throw off teams because each individual brings something different. As Funeral and Kiwi going to find two here on the bonus already. And this is going to be very dangerous. And yeah, just coming out of the smoke. Another gun retrieved, of course, by Pace. They're, they're setting the tone for this match <laughs> extremely well right now. Yeah, I... I love when players do swap up because I always like to refer to people as map spe uh, map specialists. There are some players that just feel more comfortable with a certain agent on a certain map, right? Whether it comes to solo queue or anything of the sort, they just feel more confident. And I mean, we're seeing it here. I mean, this is Pace saying, "You gave us this chance, right?" Like this is, I think, Pace's map pick, and they are running with it. it, it they're Again, they make it look so easy. Now, granted, this is where we saw the shares come out. We saw only shares come out from JJC last time they were on the attack. And now they're working with two classics, a stinger, and two uh, and two sheriffs. Come on, give us all sheriffs. I will be very happy if you do so. Don't you dare 
Go to, okay, well, they're going to go Stingers here. But either way, JJC, last time, this is the moment that they took to change things up and steal back around. Let's see if they can do it again. Um, no. Nope. <laughs> no. The answer is no. Fear, just three people just brutalizing Garage Door right there and able to take, of course, the raise on JJC out. And that's just unfortunate, right? Like, you're not expecting three people to rain bullets, basically <laughs> hellfire coming down, raining on you as you just kind of gradually peek the corner, right? Like, you're not even overextending yourself. That's just unfortunate. Aww. And Kiwi's going to be able to just assume that Roman is there. And there is another wallbang kill. Make that two. Is every single kill this round going to be a wallbang? We will find out. I think that's the second time we've seen someone get like a uh, like a pixel peek, right? You, you get yeah. just a sliver of where the character is, and you're like, "I'll take that." And it's so, it, it feels bad, right? It feels so bad that you're spotted just a hair fraction, and it gives away. But that's that's Valorant, right? That is Valorant right now. And Funeral now getting a couple kills of their own. They are not Spike stopping planted. pace. Are showing why they One deserve this name. Remains. Why they show themselves as an absolute top tier team. And I mean. Having uh, Revengeance, having one of the uh, most basic gun skins in the game right now, rocking their way through. This is looking, please don't tell me it's okay. Thank you, Bangus. Thank you for at least taking one out and not putting a triple flawless on the board. Yeah, and I'm a little bit sad there because the only person that didn't get a wall bang kill was Ravagence, so we're just going to leave that there uh, with how it is. Uh, I was hoping for five wall bang kills because everybody knows that Haven is notoriously made out of paper mache, and so it just kind of happens. But, I mean, Ace is coming out here and kind of proving a point. Uh, they are 7-0 and for a reason. I'm not going to take anything away from them. Obviously, at least Bangus was able to get one there, uh, but you, you have to change something up right here if you're JJC, right? Like, so they're just kind of overtaking sight. They're being aggressive. I would not hold this angle if I'm you, Madman, but your name is that for a reason, so we'll see what happens. I, I, I think happens they at least they learned. Like, yeah. they definitely learned from before, right? Like... <laughs> oh my gosh, Funeral's still trying to play. Oh, and got a peek off, so, okay, okay. Big ups, big ups right now, and you still took damage. Oh my gosh, this is... What are they? This is the most gutsy call from JJC right now. They're like, yeah. we're still gonna play Tango here. We're still gonna be at a pain in your side. And granted, it works this time, right? JJC have not lost a single player in this round just yet. Before is losing at least one or two in the opening, about thirty seconds. So Pace wondering now, what are we actually going to do? How are we going to do this? this is the first time that we're not having a man advantage. Where do we send our util? And we send it into garage, just kind of spanking it out. But this is all a fake. You see that two members have already buried themselves down in sewer by A, and only one person is holding that. Now, obviously, very quick rotations happen on Haven, especially from the B side. But this is looking like it's going to be a 4v1 for the most part. There's the haunt coming out. Roman's going to be able to hear that and communicate to his team. We're going to be in a full 5v5 retake scenario, and at least John Jay has guns this time. So it's going to be interesting to see what can happen here with the site just being overrun, essentially, and the plant going down. What's crazy is JJC allow this to happen. They say we're going to do better on the full retake. I'm surprised that they're going for this, but it's going to work. Roman is going to find Funeral again. Great util being snowballed and catapulted together. Ravengeance is going to get one, but Kiwi, what? Kiwi gets a double with a single bullet. Are you kidding me, Kiwi? You can't keep getting away with this. One enemy remaining. <laughs> Just, oh, okay. Roman? <laughs> Two HP to their name. Get, give them the defuse. <laughs> no, no, give you, them the BM. Oh. Give them the BM. I love it. Oh my, that was that was gorgeous. All right, that, if you're gonna win a round right there, win it off the back of Roman's 3K. You got the first pick in heaven and just sat there and was like, they're gonna forget I'm here. And in fact, it did happen. Granted, it was also Kiwi getting some nutty shots off, and you're just like, why was that even allowed? So. 4-1 still respectable and able to bounce back from it, but Pace, I mean, we know Pace are going to have something up their sleeve, right? That was a much slower round, and not for want of trying, right? JGC played much further back in a passive motion. I think it was a delay in Garage and then a one or two off on the side, but the fact that they did opt, for, well, sorry. Sorry, I had to call that one out. Is now going to get straight down, and Kiwi gets it because they learned, right? Game number one, it was a full defense from JJC. This time, Pace are putting on the pressure and saying, you don't get to play passive. You get to play to our tune, and Darius is going to say, okay, I'll listen, and I will take notes. Darius, I hope he doesn't get timing from behind right now. Oh, 
Oh, man, JJC. Going to be investing the Nightfall here as well. Oh, oh, what a spray down, Roman. Are you serious? And the spike hasn't been planted yet. This is going to be a full rotate to A. And now it's going to be a 1v1. And the health advantage is actually going to favor JJC. And if anybody you want in this situation, it has to be Roman, right? After that 4K last round, he's probably feeling himself. He's probably confident. Ravagen is going to have two shrouded steps to work with as well. He might work his way to heaven after this plant. It's going to be very cute. He yep. does. Yeah. Visionary, you are absolutely envisioning everything that's going to happen here. Up. You are a psychic right now. Calling out that TP to the top side. Now, the question is, does Roman know that, right? Does Roman know that this is going to happen? And to top it off, it's going to be an own smoke to try and give a little bit of misdirection here. Revenge is saying, give me a chance. Please give me this opportunity. Roman is going to enter in. Quick spot here. And you're going to slow pace down. Oh, you roll through, but you're spotted on the top side. And Revenge is just going to wait. In goes a little bit of a peek. Are you going to peek in time? Yes, you do. Even before the half goes off. Revenge, beautifully done to give your team a fifth. Just not enough time there, unfortunately. I mean, I understand the slow walk all the way to the A site. But after their plant A, you have to cut a little bit of that time out. And unfortunately, didn't really run onto the site. And... I mean, you're right. I kind of did call the TP up to heaven. The own smoke was a great idea. Unfortunately, I mean, kinda. Uh, yeah, kinda. Roman, <laughs> Roman just came a little bit too late, right? Because if he comes earlier, he's able to tap the spike. Maybe Revenge is going to find that. But because the smoke is gone, it kind of gives that illusion of choice away. And so the utility gets dumped. Everything else is gone. And okay. Guys, like, stop peeking that angle, please. Just do me a favor, JJC. If you learn anything from this match, it's Haste is going to just spam that, and there's no point in sitting there. Was that actually a peak? The angle that they died at, at least on the minute. It's not a peak. It's not a peak. It's not it's, a peak, but yeah. you, they have sprayed it down with three phantoms That's four true. different <laughs> rounds in a row. Do not sit there. And they only spray the left door. <laughs> the right one is still standing. Just don't sit in front of the left door for the love of God. Please <laughs> tell me that Pace watch videos and we're like, JJC loved to position a single player in this corner. So we will mow it down every single round just to give them a heart attack. I hope that they actually did that. And it's going to open up a huge walloping here on A site once again. You can see the full wrap on one player, but it still leaves them in a 2v4. JJC, I mean, you're getting the short end of the stick right now. Yeah, JJC actually used the Tour de Force this round as well on the save. And of course, the flank going to be coming out from the omen here i'm madman I, I can't say i blame him he's not even going to pick up the gun because he doesn't want to make the noise he doesn't want to be spotted but they have this red out pretty much perfectly Siddick's going to find one and the headhunter is going to be out dude i mean you already invested the tour de force might as well go down in a blaze of glory at this point with all the 14 crossfires that are held on the angle they're spraying <laughs> it down right there there's the tour de force that's what you like to see peek that aggressively buddy there you oh! go Mangus. that's what i'm talking about he's gonna get stunned out headhunter gonna be oh! here finds another okay get a little bit of value out of this another peak comes oh! out Mangus. come on oh, oh! <laughs> the full flash from zen definitely love that moment right there from Bangus. getting a little bit aggressive being able to at least get some economic removed but it's just gonna be i mean obviously the econ is gonna be fine on pace they've won five or i'm sorry yeah five out of the last six rounds or six out of the last seven if you want to take it that way as well so man i was so ready to hype up bangus i was ready to call it oh, i was, I was too, ready bro. to say it i mean it, it was like funeral 2.0 right there right that was the second moment but it was a good stop right pace realized that they can't let that happen again for them they're not making those awkward swings they're ensuring that they always have a backup plan and a backup plan for the backup plan and i think that's very appropriate so right now jgc are spread in a 2-1-2 and again stopping on that uh, garage which i think is appropriate this time around it's a hard spread on top and xaris you do survive but you can't stop the push coming in to see for the first time in this game it is a seaside push from pace and also i mean the the rolling thunder was invested and it hit nobody because it was angled like they were just coming on to see when they had already taken sight and that's just unfortunate timing right there roman of course the clutch master from before gets spotted out gonna find one here all right can he do it again is the real question 4k in the clutch has the potential to do it here there's another wall bang headshot unfortunately gets taken down by ravagens that smoke is thrown high just to kind of distract from the aim point and pace is going to go up 7-1 Oh man, it is. It, it is Pace just having an absolute blast right now.
Right, they are just enjoying their time here at this point. I think Kiwi's going for a highlight real play. Uh, what is that? So eight rounds. You have a 2.0 KDA so far, right? That is that is two per round that I'm seeing here. I, I just Kiwis are delicious. I'll say it right now. That's that's what Pace are trying to make me think here. So so well done. And now again, are they no? Are they just looking to get a plant at every single site right now? <laughs> Uh, they're just running the uh, RK is actually not able to find anything with that showstopper either. This is going to be dangerous for sure. Of course, this is a save round. A lot of investment go so far going towards mid, and they're actually just going to push on the site. They don't care about the utility. They're just going to go in. RK is going to get one. Siddick and Zen going to get some trades here. Kiwi trying to go in as well. Bang is bong going to be unfortunately paranoid, I believe, Ooh. by their own teammate. But Drarius is going to find one as well. And here's Last Kiwi on the backside, and Siddick's going to get taken down as well. Wow. So it's going to be up to Kiwi. Hey, you have a three OKD right now. Let's see what you can get. And I, and that was definitely arrogance coming out of pace right there. They just, they, they kind of funneled themselves into it. So I think this is the appropriate response here. But the worst part is Kiwi can still make it out. You can see here cheating over to that A site. Is he going to look for it? You go ahead and pick up your rendezvous. So you had that back in your pocket. But it was well held by JJC, right? They called the bluff out of pace. They said, hey, you're going to get a little bit too ballsy, left. and you are able to capitalize. You take multiple members away, and you have a chance at taking a second. You have to stem this bleeding somehow. Yeah, and it's just, it's really curious to me after, you know, the kind of joint Five spreads planted. we've seen, of course, from Pace kind of spreading themselves out, you know, splitting showers and long, being able to, you know, just wall bang the absolute crap out of C to start oh. off with. That's actually a great job by Kiwi to find one in isolated duel, and now it's 10 HP versus 30. And this is going to be something right here. I wonder, the gun was not spotted on the min. Oh my, madman. They're just having to sit here and just direly wait as a second tap comes out, and they have to know oh, Kiwi's hurt. there, right? No! What? Unforge. Unforge. I swear. I swear on everything. That Kiwi made noise because as soon as we saw the jiggle from Kiwi, right? I'm Madman. Started to take a peek towards that connector. I thought that they knew, but the 50-50 was not in their time. So Kiwi at this point is a star of the show, eight to one, and Pace just do not care. They're setting up for an A side push. They're going into guns this time, but I don't come think on, they're gonna on. care, right? This is a hard push. This is all for all for us, right? They have not done a hard push in a while. Not done a full send, and I think they're gonna do it here and see how much they can get. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of just feeling themselves at this point. That's gonna be a great, of course, breach utility there. Funeral's not gonna find anything here. Spray through the smoke. Sight's going to be taken. It's going to be another 5v5 retake scenario. The difference is, ooh, a little nightfall used right here as well. Madman's going to find one from heaven. Definitely love to see that as Ravagents. Actually going to come back to the long side after the plant just to make sure that nobody's flanking. Zen's going to be able to take care of one, and Roman going to answer back. 4v3 right now. JJC actually has the chance to get this retake successful. Very well done so far. They clean house, so JJC do what they could not do last round, and you spray that spike as much as you want. You earn that round and not a moment too soon, right? In JJC, yes, you're going to have to fight an uphill battle. Every single round from here on out, the last two rounds here in the half, are going to be full buy rounds, I think, from uh from the side of pace. Or, or it might be crazy. Yeah, yeah, it should be. Sorry, brain not functioning well. It should be. But again, JJC getting a little bit of a confidence booster. That was a very nice defensive play against pace right they saw the rush coming they planted themselves appropriately they did not allow the utility to blind them in their efforts and they're able to fight back all the way across the board can they do it again right another in a three two and another spray in garage this time it is understood and jjc don't even attempt to defend against it yeah, roman kind of holding this angle it's looking like a little bit of a default here of course they're going to put that pressure towards c they have, of course, uh, you have Kiwi just sitting there with the tour de force, just watching a sewer to make sure nobody steps a bit out of line and gets a little bit aggressive. And that's definitely a good hold. Is Funeral going to be found here? Going to get that fault line on them as well as this. Oh, no Boombot found though. I thought I could have sworn that I saw that JJC used one. It's not going to be the case. Everybody kind of falls back and this default goes on for about 40 seconds here. Not a lot found other than, of course, a whole bunch of damage on that left side door. 
Doors holding strong. Doors like, bruh, I got you. <laughs> I don't got what's ever behind me, but I got you for a moment at least. <laughs> like, yeah. I think I think that door is just like looking back, like I defend it. Why did you die? Like I had the shield and everything, but it, it it tried. It definitely tried its hardest. This is actually the slowest pace I've taken around. Uh, I I think with all five members up, thirty, 30 seconds, seconds is what they're holding, and actually five Roman's gonna bite back. They said definitely you waited enemy. way too long. Four cleared out. In a flawless round of all times for JJC to clean house pace, Last bite round, a bullet and a half. They do, and I, the econ isn't going to be good enough for full buys all around here for pace. So we might be looking at 8 4 at the half once again. Of course, that was the first round as well. Uh, definitely interested to see kind of what they put together as a buy. Probably going to see some Aries out just for that wall spam that they love so much. A couple of other things. Uh, but, you know, I got to give props to JJC here. They kind of baited it out. They just held their ground. There was really no reason to get aggressive, right? You know it's full guns versus full guns. No need to take peeks that you don't need to. Just everybody play those angles, get off of it, and we're going to see the rundown take right now, of course, from Pace trying to take this A site. We're going to take a chance, and Darius gets the heck out of dodge here. Funeral going to back up from the boom bot, make sure no extra damage comes through there. And remember, JGC do have two decent ultimates here. Again, the uh, the Breach, going to be able to roll through pretty hard. The From the Shadows might not be the most effective, but getting behind, if you know it's a five-man push, could easily lead to a brutal, brutal flank here. So Pace do have to keep that in mind. That's why they're not willing to push right away. They're going to run out of time to maybe about 30 seconds, and then take your chances once again. Yeah, but you're going to be running right into the Rolling Thunder as well that is just posted up. So this is going to be a dangerous take regardless, even not even considering the fact that they're down guns. So we're going to see that smoke come out. We're going to see Funeral go ahead and go in. Here's the Execute coming in right now. That Rolling Thunder gets committed, but Funeral going to find Ooh. one with that buffed Stinger. It's definitely a good gun, but it's not enough to get down Darius. The trade's coming out from Ravages, oh. though. Going to be phenomenal. Roman here only needs one ult point to get that Nightfall. It's going to be vital for this retake as now it's a 4v2. And honestly, JJC, we're not ready for it at all. But Bengus is saying, I am ready on my own. Whether my team is ready or not, is able to take two in heaven and send them down to hell. Roman, one need to get one, 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 but I get stabbed in the back. Down. Here is going to get stabbed, but Siddick waiting for one more. With the spike down, you spray, you draw the attention, and you swing, and Siddick sends Bengus to the battle bus once again. Totally different game, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's going to be nine rounds to pace. And they're looking great. I just want to take this time. Obviously, the scoreline is 9-3. I have to commend Roman or, uh, Roman for how well they've done in this first half. Like, mm -hmm. the 4K clutch, everything else. They're trying their hardest to kind of put the team on the back and have an answer to Kiwi. And to be honest with you, they've answered the call pretty effectively, right? It's just the rest of the support staff wasn't really there on defense. So I'm definitely interested to see how JJC looks here on the attack. When I, I mean, I'd argue that this is a more attacker-favored comp than a defender one, to be honest with you. You know, Fade for Util is great. The Nightfall and the Rolling Thunder are great retake tools, but you have to be able to win those aim duels. And I think you get a little bit better positioning out of these agents with their movement abilities, of course, on the offensive side than you do on the defensive side. Would very much agree. And I mean, we're going to see if that comes true. And I mean, if JJC start pulling out some ridiculous rounds, we'll, we'll know it was a comp diff, right? We'll know the comp made up a large chance, but... Revengeance said, hey, listen, we own the garage, whether we're on attack or defense. Take first blood. Roman is on site, but the pain shell keeps him from planting right away. And giving enough information over means that JJC are going to get the plant. Might not have enough time to get in position for the retake. Yeah, and it's going to be a 5v4 retake, of course. Uh, nobody needs to be pushing shower at all against pace, apparently. Or, I'm not sorry, garage against pace at all. That's just their <laughs> domain. They own it. Uh, they took it, you know, they they went to their local government, they fired and uh, filed an eminent domain claim, and they're like, this is ours? Can we have this? And they were like, you know what? We'll let you take it. Uh, we've seen your performance. <laughs> you deserve it. As the haunt's going to come out, a lot of utility coming out. Kiwi able to find one as the retake just stumbles oh. through everybody through long. RK is going to find a couple here, but there's only one player remaining. Jeez. And versus four members, of course, of Pace, that is going to be tough sledding ahead. Revenge is going to get two there. Lives with one HP, which you definitely love to see as well. 10 to 3 is going to be our scoreline. Oh, man. I'm... <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing a deep dive analysis. I'm supposed to be bringing so much information, but I'm just amazed at the stat differences here, right? Taking a look at Kiwi. Okay. 
Kiwi is one kill away from matching both Revengeance and Funeral combined. And that's just ridiculous to me, right? Again, in a match where only 14 or 13 rounds have expired, you've already proven yourself as the single player that everyone needs to watch out for. And from JJC, there's no real way to kind of pin this player down. You know, you talk a lot uh, you talk about a lot of teams that like to kind of like dog on a certain player if you know they're causing you some problems. It's very, very difficult to do. Right now, Roman trying to chase into this beast site. Revengeance finds Bangus and then the spray through some of the other corridors means that JJC are losing members so, so quickly. They get the play, but now they have to defend it. And that's going to be the difficult part with double swings coming in everywhere. Ooh. Funeral was able to find two, and it's going to be Madman alone versus four once again. And it's basically an impossible scenario. And I just want to remind you, you're seeing all these frags from Kiwi right now on Chamber. They were playing Viper last map. <laughs> the change-up. The change-up <laughs> is too real. Oh, I just... Oh my, it, that's just one of the things, it doesn't even confuse me because I, I understand map picks, right? Like I am I am a complete op crutch and I'm not trying to compare myself to Kiwi at all, but I will play smokes on Fracture and Breeze and Icebox. You know, like I feel confident in my Viper there. I feel confident in my Brimstone. So it makes sense, right? But like, why don't you let this man just run loose everywhere? Like at that point, just make concessions. It doesn't even matter. Like, just I have mean, this man I on chamber 24 seven. <laughs> I, I would honestly say no matter where you go, Kiwi's going to be pretty dang good, right? Like, that's that's the feeling here. And I understand you are correct. Kiwi uh, in game number one only had 14 kills, right? Nothing too crazy, oh, nothing too over the, over the boat. But right now, they're, they're chasing for it, right? Pace is going to set up. The boombot's going to go around the corner with a little bit of a satchel, and you don't really catch anyone. So, JJC, we're ready for it. And you hear the shot. Oh, that shows Sopper. Lands doesn't actually kill anyone, but gets enough for the assist and the damage sources. Paint Shell in the back. Darius gets one snap into the body of Funeral and immediately gets taken out by Revengeance, who doubles up. It's now match point pace have picked up the pace in style and they only need one this is a full buyout by jjc and they're putting it all on the line here i mean you have to right you're staring down the barrel of a 312 you got to buy every single gun you potentially can pace being able to pull out a bonus round for the second time and the two maps i think that's massive as well it just kind of shows their coordination and their ability and their trust in their gunplay and you see of course uh i mean funeral being able to get that that uh showstopper out didn't really get a lot for them, but it got enough chip damage for their actual SMGs to be effective, right? And I think that's huge regardless if you were able to kill somebody with it or not. As we're going to see nobody spamming doors this round on JJC. And a nice little welcome change from the pace that we saw where, you know, three full clips of phantom bullets were coming through. Is the fault line going to hit one? Not going to hit Madman as this smoke goes out. Still a pretty heavy default with just a little bit of aggression towards Sea Garage. And the garage has been home to some ridiculous deaths that uh, that I, I feel should never expire. So the fact that JGC are still willing to stand on that point and just be like, yo, Shadows can, you peek? Can, can you peek? They're not going to, and now chasing into the C position. It's only one defender from pace, so we're going to see Revengeance try and lay down the... Okay, okay, Revengeance, okay. You know, if you're going to revenge against someone, you have to make sure that they get a kill first. That's how avenging works. It's still a two for two. Taking a look at it a little bit more. JJC are going to get taken out by Kiwi and the pistol. Darius is going to find one. Darius is going to find a third, actually, overall. And down into the 1v2, Cidic is going to try their best to take it home in stylish fashion. With the Bulldog as well, the ADS. I mean, you you have an opportunity to win this against Rifles just because the aim punch is so strong in this game. It's definitely has the potential to win this out. I still can't believe. Oh my God, Siddick. Darius gets taken out there. I still don't know how he won that gun challenge on the site. And somebody gets marked as well. Oh, this is going to be bad news. Bears ahead. Angus Bong, you got to do something here. You got to show us something special to keep your life oh alive. My gosh. And he spotted the trail is there. The headshot is there. And Cynic oh. is going to take out the two and send us home in a 13 to 3 haven. Haste just establishing their dominance Defenders. on both of these maps, able to go 8 0 and have a perfect run through the regular season. It took a grand total of dropping seven rounds. That's all they dropped over the course of these two matches. And again, they look stalwart, even in the overpowering Kiwi matchup, even though uh, we watched Zen also take a 26 bomb uh, in game number one. 
it still felt like it was team coordination that got most of the kills, right? Making sure to swing the right angles together, making sure to drop the util at the right time. There are times where you see teams test the waters with the util, right? Say, okay, send in a little bit of a secret, drop a single smoke. Is there any response? Every single bit of util that came out of pace felt like it was there for a specific reason. And that specific reason was to forward their push or try and get a kill. So very nicely done. This team is looking so dangerous for what is going to come up in the rest of the playoffs. I'm so excited to see how they do against these other eight no teams that we have in other divisions because this is just this is wild, right? This is just absolutely crazy. Definitely love seeing everything that we did from pace, the cohesive attacks, the defense. I'm going to take that triple wall spam and start using that just for funsies just to see what happens because <laughs> you got to do just it with a bit ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. No, you're there not going to get two phantoms. teammates to do that with you. <laughs> oh, I five stack, bro. I'll get it to happen. Hey, like, oh, let's watch go. The bond. Watch the bot. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try this out. But other than that, I do have to commend, of course, JJC. I, they gave it their all. They took a couple of good thrifty rounds as well. And I always always have to shout out Roman for their effort there. Over 300 ACS on fade in a losing matchup. When I mean, honestly, the the match only went 16 rounds. So to be able to get that within that, like hang your head up high. You did a real good job that time. But in the meantime, of course, Orbital, we're going to be looking for an interview here off of one of the members from Pace, of course, just trying to talk about the gameplay, talk about what they were thinking through, and obviously ask them what that triple wall bang through the door is about. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to find somebody to go ahead and interview. And right after this, we're going to stick around with an interview. Don't, don't, don't wait around. My brain just malfunctioned, but uh, be right back. We're going to take a quick break. Hey, what's up? It's Honix back at it again to bring you the sickest clips from ECAC. But listen, guys, here's the thing. Overwatch 2 still isn't out, and it's been so long that I understand what's happening in the Valorant clips now. I just, I don't know how I could have let this happen. Anyways, let's check out the action from week two of ECAC. First up, we've got Miko Baka, who's got a need for speed. But they have to be careful here. That kick up not quite in their favor. Patrick has to be quick to him. And Nico Baka, he's just soaring through his sky with way too much pace. Yeah, you knew this was coming. When this one lingered up in the air for a bit too long from Janiel's touch, Patrick tried to go up for this one. But Nico, like we said, he's been the fastest player in this lobby. The just a friendly reminder that fireworks always add pizzazz to your points. Of this series. Good read there by Jock. Because if he didn't place down that block, that would have been a really early stock lead that he would have gotten. And oh, oh wow, that save. Absolutely sniped out of midair. What a Everyone is in flux when Mount St. Mary's is on the point. And that is the bulk of your healing if you're Emery and Henry. Now you're coming in with both DPS souls and the Shatter, but again, a massive gravity flux comes out from Mount St. Mary, stops them in their tracks before they can even get started. Yeah, the attack visor are gonna deal the final blows to several members of Emery and Henry. Eve has got beef with BSU and wants everyone to know it. Be one situation left to clutch it out. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm a little bit afraid here that the wide swing's gonna come out, but Ian's waiting. Ian is being a little bit patient here. Youth is not going to be able to get the first one, and maybe, maybe if Ian was able to wait there a little bit longer, Eve would not have been able to get that free kill. Someone, not me, is going to have to tell Taylor Halo that sharing isn't always caring. Gonna beat it. Get right out, Halo.
Don't let your guard down. You never know when Rhino will come charging in. Rhino is all the way back. That just goes to show how much they're not wanting to make it, but Rhino with all the control gets the one on the board. <laughs> Talk about getting one in there. That he actually like picks it up initially from like a mini pass to himself. That you know an expert is expecting an expert to do something expertly, right? That is just about <laughs> as simple as it gets, right? Like 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 just just literally boiling it down to more basic rocket league right uh... there. Oh my god! And again, Rhino does it twice in about 30 seconds after no scores. We're bringing it around town with Chowan University. Big fights out short town though. Just gets the better of it. Great spray control. Takes two down with him. And already Chowan is looking at a 2-0 right now. Gonna try an entry onto the site with quickness. Not willing to take his foot off the pedal. And Town's got a third. The last two coming from CT. And Town wants to put the nail in the coffin right here, right now. One there, he's gonna hear them both. Get the head in front of him. Four before he goes down. And all it takes is Dusty to finish this one off. Last but certainly not least, Big J5 coming in hot with a big 5K. And Kentucky, they may get the second point for free. Ooh, oh, that headshot. Big J. The oh, another headshot. one. What? He's got and another dragon already. The third. Wait, he finds three. three. Big J, he's looking for a fourth. Oh, my God, he finds it. He is single-handedly destroying Kentucky right now. Oh, my goodness. Four eliminations, one Hanzo, and a brand new Dragons Online. The question... Wow, I miss these awesome clips and it's only week two, so make sure to keep up with the action on Twitch at ECAC underscore esports, Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 and Wednesdays at 7. And make sure to follow their Twitter at ECAC underscore esports. And thank you to our partner Esports U and to you for hanging out with me today. See you next time. My name is Jacob. I'm 21, and it's my first year in this school. I've already been to community college for the last two years, but I transferred here. It's a whole new program. What made you transfer? I wanted to do something different. I already have an uh, associate's degree in business administration, and I wanted to come to this school and do audio production, just like uh, music engineering stuff. So what do you want to do with that? The main goal is to... Uh, work in like music studios and like help with like the music creation process. Anywhere kind of in the audio recording realm is fine with me. And do you have a go-to genre of music that you like? I don't know. It's it, it it's it's uh it's all over the place to be honest. Yeah, no judgment. <laughs> it's all over. It's all over the place. So how do you like the program that you're in now? Do you like your school? Yes. Do I really do like this school? And with this whole esport thing, I think it just made it a little bit better because like it's. It's new, you know, it's, you don't do it. Mm -hmm. it. Not everyone, you know, has it. And mm -hmm. it's something that I'm very interested in and have been interested in for a while. You didn't have esports at your old school? I want to say there was a club, but I didn't know anything of it. This is your first time being part of a collegiate esports team then? Yes. And how do you like it? Like, how do you, how do you feel about it? I love it, to be honest. Growing up, I played baseball. I threw senior year of my high school. I wasn't like doing anything traditional sport wise in college it wasn't until this year that i was like oh because like i saw it like i saw, I saw like a poster hanging up i was like oh esports let's let's just go do it i really like it though it's something cool something new my friends like it so I'm like cool what are your games that you play i play valorant for the school on like the side i ca i've been playing fortnite recently and i play osu sometimes so how does it feel being a part of the team? Do you like your team? Yes, I do. I pretty much made friends with all of them. Obviously, I have met them. Since a lot of things have been remote recently, I still have met them, and they're very nice kids. Our arena is being built at the moment. The Valorant mm -hmm. team should be getting in there first, so I'm very excited to play in there. What do you do to improve yourself in-game, and do you take that strategy into your everyday life as well? 
for in game, I try and play every day. That's kind of mm-hmm. like the one thing I try to do. Even if I have like a little burnout from it, maybe from like the previous day, I still try to get on and do something. Of course, you watch YouTube. There's a millions of things that did, uh, that you can watch on YouTube. I like to watch different content creators in the in that niche just to like inspire me to play a little bit more you know do i carry it into my everyday life i do i'm very into like music production there's a lot of things you can do like like the same thing you do it every day you follow you watch youtube in that niche you like you take things you learn and you apply it there's a lot of similarities of things like if you want to do something you 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 very much have to dive deep into that niche of things you want to do if you had to guess or just kind of spitball here how many hours a week do you think you spend gaming? Honestly, I've never thought about it. I'm on my computer almost every day. It's up there. <laughs> it's up there. <laughs> it's up there. Uh, between between playing with friends and kind of just doing stuff by myself, it's up there. Uh, you spoke about burnout when it comes to playing and you play every day. What do you do to kind of get yourself back into the zone or what do you do when you're experiencing burnout? It kind of goes back to like watching content creators like the people I watch on YouTube, I just, I will, I'll like, I'll see if they post anything new or I'll just watch whatever they have and I'll get inspired to do it. And I'll just be like, all right, what well, time to hop on. Even if I don't, not feeling it, I'll try to try to do something. Would you say that there's anyone on your team that really stands out to you or kind of motivates you to play? Yes. One kid on our team's name's Alex. He is Diamond 2. Diamond 1 or Diamond 2 in Valorant. So he, he's up there. He only really plays with us. He plays on his own, but he, he plays with us during games and sometimes afterwards. Trying to be at his level, I think, would be very the goal. So he kinda, it, it kind of like inspires you to kind of like keep going. Anyone really, mm-hmm. anyone really that's higher ranked than you kind of inspires you to like, all right, you, you, you want to you wanna push yourself to be where they are. And that's right. kind of what I've been doing recently. There are, there are people like that for you since this is your first time being on a collegiate team do you have any advice to people who may be looking to join a team or aren't sure if they should or not i say just go for it when i saw the poster in the school i was like maybe they have like you know balloting team whatever at the time i was i kind of doubted my ability right i kind of doubted my ability because like i was a low rank i know i could hold my own in the game but i didn't know how i would like compare but i think you just have to go for it because if you don't how would you know if you don't go for it would you say that the people on your team helped you out yeah for sure i think people who are higher ranked than you are like they they teach you 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 obviously learn on your own but there's a lot of things that you can get you, you can get taught from your teammates and just how they how they play Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this with me. I really appreciate it. I can't say that. I'll get in trouble. There's one for each game, so teams this weekend. Somebody's going to have to explain to TSA why they're coming home with an extra trophy. Fine. We're fine. This is going to be great. Why is everybody staring at me? I'm not even doing anything yet. Is it because I'm in a suit? It looks nice. It's new. I'm stressing. I'm stressing. It's all right. We win these. We absolutely win these. I've never seen us lose these. I love him. I I don't remember his name. What is going on, everybody? And Oh, are we ready? I'll start over. Okay. What's going on, everybody? We are here at the Collegiate Esport Commissioner's Cup 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia. The players are just now entering the arena for day one. A lot of them had the opportunity to be here yesterday to get jerseys, to get familiar with the area, and to get to know one another. But today, the friendly gloves have to come off, and they are all here. Earlier, I was talking to these guys. This mannequin, when they didn't have anything else set up, I could see it from all the way down there, and I thought it was a person. And I stood there for like five minutes, and I was like, why is he standing like that? And I thought it was like a smooth criminal. I thought somebody was giving us like a Michael Jackson impression, and then it was a mannequin. I was really embarrassed to admit that. Oh my God, that's a lot of people. Hold on, let's go over this window. Let's go over this window. It just keeps going. There's so many people outside. There are so many people outside. We're going to interview people when they come in. I don't really want to go outside. It looks like it's going to rain, and this suit is new, so. Oh, there's Doc Haskell. Hi, Doc. How are you? He, he brings a full notebook with him and, like, writes notes down. It was pretty insane. He had it yesterday. He's going to be coming through this metal detector right here. I don't know his name, though, but I recognize his hair. Jen. You're Jen? All right, we're going to interview Jen, who's supporting Kennesaw. I'm going to ask you like, a couple of very simple questions. Okay. Um, are we ready? All right, great. College. I really like Georgia College's uh, color scheme. It's just red, white, and blue, I think but I think they did it in a really clever way. Mineral area wearing hoodies, even though it is 75 degrees outside here in Atlanta, Georgia. Absolute legends. If only Nick could hear you. Nick, come back. If he's over 100 feet away, he can't. You were whispering something, and he started smiling. I'm like, are you whispering? Oh, yeah, because he's, he's got his headphone in if we're close enough. But Bless you. Gesundheit. Gesundheit again. You're welcome. I'm going to go find him. Oh, oh, there he is. 
Oh my. Oh, okay, okay. Real, real stuff is starting. Real stuff. Competitive integrity needs to be upheld. We gotta get out of here. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get in trouble. I'm really. I, I get really embarrassed when I get yelled at. Thirty is already. Okay. You. Wow, it's not 10:30 yet. It's only like <laughs> barely 10. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long. Hey, what's up? Surprise interview. Join me over here. This we have a cool backdrop. What are we here for? Rocket League. Awesome. I'm not gonna ask what school you go to because unless you swap toadies, that seems pretty clear. Nope. You know, I got I got my jersey on with my name on it. Oh, you do. We show us your jersey. Look at John T. Turbo here. Yeah, exactly. That's not his name. I just keep. Hello and welcome back to Esports U. We just saw a magnificent matchup, of course, in between Pace University and John Jay College. Ended up in a 2-0. Pace was relatively dominant, and that would be underselling it just a little bit during that <laughs> matchup. Alongside me, of course, is Orbital, but we're going to have the pleasure as well of bringing Revengeance over as well from this Pace University squad. Revengeance, how are you doing? Very nice plushie, by the way. Oh, wait, that's there? My bad. <laughs> um, it's, I, I'm having a great day so far. Uh, yeah, I can tell. So <laughs> I just have one question to ask you, and it, this is very simple, right? All right? The triple wall bang with phantoms on Sea Garage on Haven, was that something <laughs> that y'all had in film, or is that something that y'all just strategically do to try to get people off those angles? We mark, we like pre mark the spots where we think people would be at, and we would just, oh. we would basically spam the, those spots. I think everyone individually spammed their own little section. And that's that's basically what that's... we did. And it worked for three rounds, I think. So Yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> that's, uh, so it, it, did the, it did its job. A little bit too well, I think. At one point, I don't know if you guys knew, you cleared Garage twice. Uh, they did not even want to enter into Garage. Uh, that was how badly you had, like, scarred them. Oh. And I think it's appropriate because they're throughout – all uh both these games it, it felt like you guys were almost always in control and i had i had a chance to actually talk to darius earlier before the series went off and he said that uh at least in his opinion the team was looking at around a three to four in confidence heading into this matchup mm -hmm. that seems to have reflected way differently like you guys look like an absolute monster how are you guys feeling coming in at least from your perspective we're running a new comp on haven we just started the comp a couple uh a couple hours ago so it's uh we yeah we 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 have made it official like today because um zin and i were were switching off between breach and omen and uh i was like yeah i'm just gonna go omen like screw it we, it's it's all good man we will we'll get it down um the fact of the matter is we practice enough to really understand how most of these teams play we try to play off each other as much as we can. It doesn't matter if we're being bottom frag or top frag, as long as we're putting in some sort of, you know, effort into the team. We're giving the communication, we're giving the trades, we're giving the information. That's the big part. Yeah. I mean, I 100% I agree. And that's why it, it almost came to a shock to us that even though uh, in game one, uh, between games one and two, you guys shifted up who played what i mean there was a drastic shit a drastic shift in like who was playing the smokes and who was really taking some of those agents and yet you guys still look so fluid look so clean and it looked clinical i mean this is something that it sounds you guys have put hours and hours into i gotta ask you is this just uh the top of the barrel i mean how far down are you guys willing to dig and how much are you guys willing to show off and how much more do you have prepped going into playoffs? I mean, just give me a number. Like, are we looking at, like, are you guys going standard? Or do you guys got those, like, six or seven unique styles that you're ready to pull out? Um, As far as I'm concerned, almost everyone in the team kind of can play every role. Right? We we just got, like, our, one of our new players, Funeral. And he uh, he kind of, he was he was new. He brought it, He brought it in with the fire. And we were just like, all right. We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna bring it back with him. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, we have a bunch of strategies for every game, but you know the strategies change once in a while. We gotta adapt to the meta, and as long as we're able to to maintain our in game, we're we're gonna continue this this little win streak. I don't think it's fair to call it little at this point. You've just perfectly swept the regular season. I think y'all dropped one total map. Uh, for the entire season, if I'm it, not mistaken. Was it one? So, 
Uh, that's I, that's what I'm seeing right now. So I'm uh, just going to go ahead and roll with it. Um, I can obviously double check just in case, you know, I don't yeah. want to offend you by any means. Yeah, no, versus no, Mavs no, Power no, and no. Team, y'all won 2-1. One. No, no, no. That was, I, the, that was the only time. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah. remember the team we, we lost to, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was, it we was already good. wiped that one from the memory, right? Like ah, yeah. that map didn't happen. It is what it is. It's because um, we don't but, we don't remember our wins. We remember our losses because that's what we learn from the most. That's yeah, yeah. That is. I like the answer for sure. And uh, just have to throw this out here, right? You're eight and zero. You're perfect heading into the playoffs. Obviously, you're going to get a week of rest and relaxation for uh, for Thanksgiving next week, which is always welcome, right? Is Absolutely. there any team specifically? that you're looking forward to playing in the playoffs that you have maybe a bone to pick with, or maybe that's beaten you in the past and you're ready to get some of that revengeance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we've, we've gone across the board with most of these teams. All right. There's currently one team on leaderboard that we have a bone to pick with. All right. They're an amazing team. Don't get me wrong, but Fisher, we're, we're coming for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah love to hear it i absolutely love to hear it revengeance thank you so much for joining us tonight absolutely. it's been an absolute pleasure watching your clinical gameplay y'all look extremely exciting going in of course to those playoffs and i can't wait to see more of you so thank you so much for joining us tonight any final shout outs you might want to give to anybody obviously team parents anything along those lines before we let oh, you go yeah. obviously necessary the team director parents uh my girlfriend jen um everyone everyone everyone's doing great thank you very very much for for passing by um thank you guys for making this possible as well i know production is is sometimes really hard and we, we don't really talk about that but you guys are doing an amazing job we certainly appreciate that thank you for the love uh we just talked though we have the easy job right it's all the people behind the scenes that are pushing the buttons and doing the observership that's actually hard all right then thank you to them as well <laughs> Well, Revengeance, it's been an absolute pleasure, brother. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank, Thank you for you joining us. For us, I mean, Orbital, any final thoughts about what we just saw? Because that was definitely beautiful for sure. I mean, the scary thing is, is that there are at least three or four other teams that can do the exact same. And as much as we like to talk about, you know, these teams that are obviously uh, win on a win streak of, you know, eight, uh, eight games in a row, or even the 7-1 teams, right? That's what's scary because playoffs is where we see the, the top of the top come out to play, right? We can talk about the regular season. We can say, hey, this is where, you know, a team beat, uh, you know, a 3-4, 3-5 uh, or 4-4 four, four, or 5-3, whatever you want to say. Playoffs is where it matters. At the end of the day, as much as we want to talk up these big dogs, just imagine that there's at least two or three other squads that can do exactly the same or better and that's how you know this season is going to be so good heading in to those playoff brackets. I certainly can't wait for the playoffs as well. But speaking of, we do have another regular season matchup running right now. Of course, on our sister channel, ECAC Esports. This one ended a bit early, so be sure to check that one out. I believe it's a little bit closer for sure. So <laughs> with that being said, we're going to have Rocket League tomorrow. Obviously, we're going to have more Valorant Thursday. There is so much more action to be brought on, of course, by Esports U. We're going to be excited to bring it to you in the future. Stick around. Of course, there'll be more action coming up tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful night. I can't say that. I'll get in trouble. There's one for each game, so teams this weekend. Somebody's going to have to explain to TSA why they're coming home with an extra trophy. Fine. We're fine. This is going to be great. Why is everybody staring at me? I'm not even doing anything yet. Is it because I'm in a suit? It looks nice. It's new. I'm stressing. I'm stressing. It's all right. We win these. We absolutely win these. I've never seen us lose these. I love him. I, think it, I don't remember his name. What is going on, everybody? And oh, are we ready? I'll start over. Okay. What's going on, everybody? We are here at the Collegiate Esport Commissioner's Cup 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia. The players are just now entering the arena for day one. A lot of them had the opportunity to be here yesterday to get jerseys, to get familiar with the area, and to get to know one another. But today, the friendly gloves have to come off, and they are all here. Earlier, I was talking to these guys. This mannequin, when they didn't have anything else set up, I could see it from all the way down there, and I thought it was a person. And I stood there for like five minutes, and I was like, why is he standing like that? And I thought it was like a smooth criminal. I thought somebody was giving us like a Michael Jackson impression, and then it was a mannequin. I was really embarrassed to admit that. Oh my God, that's a lot of people. Hold on, let's go over this window. Let's go over this window. It just keeps going. There's so many people outside. There are so many people outside. We're gonna interview people when they come in. I don't really want to go outside. It looks like it's gonna rain, and this suit is new. So 
Oh, there's Doc Haskell. Hi, Doc. How are you? He, he brings a full notebook with him and like writes notes down. It was pretty insane. He had it yesterday. He's going to be coming through this metal detector right here. I don't know his name, though, but I recognize his hair. Jen. you Jen? All right. We're going to interview Jen, who's supporting Kennesaw. I'm going to ask you like, a couple of very simple questions. Okay. Um, are we ready? All right. Great. College. I really like Georgia College's uh, color scheme. It's just red, white, and blue, I think, but I think they did it in a really clever way. Mineral area wearing hoodies, even though it is 75 degrees outside here in Atlanta, Georgia. Absolute legends. If only Nick could hear you. Nick, come back. If he's over 100 feet away, he can't. You were whispering something, and he started smiling. I'm like, are you whispering? Oh, yeah, because he's got his he's got his headphone in if we're close enough. But Bless you. Gesundheit. Gesundheit again. You're welcome. I'm going I'm to go find him. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh, my. Oh, okay, okay. Real real stuff is starting. Real stuff. Competitive integrity needs to be upheld. We got to get out of here. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to get in trouble. I'm really I, I get really embarrassed when I get yelled at. 30 is Okay. Wow, it's not 1030 yet. It's only like very <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, it's going to be it's going to be a long. Hey, what's up? Surprise interview. Join me over here this so we have a cool backdrop. What are we here for? Rocket League. Awesome. I'm not going to ask what school you go to because unless you swap toadies, that seems pretty clear. No, nope. you know, I got, I got my jersey on with my name on it. Oh, you do? We show us your jersey. Look at John T. Turbo here. Yeah, exactly. That's not his name. I just keep calling him that. Yeah. His name is John, but it, My it, name it, is John Turbesi. Yeah, that's not John T. Turbo. Yeah, I get the message that I'm going to Nebraska where I met you. Oh, <laughs> that's so crazy. So, context, if we're probably never going to use this, but I want to talk about it. Turbo and I met at a LAN like over a year ago. That's so crazy. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. I am Seb Delance, joined by a man I have interviewed probably well over 10 times. It's going to be my good friend, Neb, here from Bay State Overwatch team. Neb looked at me and before he started his last series, and he said, we are not dropping a map for the rest of the day. And so far, he has lived up to that title. But Neb, is there anybody you're thinking, we've got to get them out of the way. We've got to take them down. Uh, no. No? Just looking at it, each fight's its own, every game. Going into it, just taking it as it comes? Uh, I have the confidence right now that we're not going to drop a single map. I, I love Neb because he, not only is he confident, but he's correct. Bay State is one of the best Overwatch teams I've ever seen. So it's it's always good to hear from I love the confidence, and I love Bay State, so I hope they do a great job this weekend. So what qualifier? Did you win a qualifier to get here? At large bid. We're looking at Rocket League. We're thinking high odds, low odds. What do, where do we think we're walking away? I think I think pretty high. I think we're, we're doing pretty good. Is there anybody that you're looking at, you're like, please do not let us go up against them unless we absolutely have to? I mean, really, everybody's good competition. So. And sorry, what was your name? Ethan. Ethan. Ethan from Mineral Area. Yep. Very exciting. Well, Ethan, good luck. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Please. What kind of pass? A player pass? Let me get you a lanyard. No, you actually have to like, tape it to your chest, like really awkwardly with masking tape. Okay. And it's going to fall off. Yeah. It's going it's to be uncomfortable, I promise. That's a guarantee. Okay, cut that. I'm going to sneeze. Okay, great. I'm great. Everything's good. Who do we interview? Who should we interview? I don't know. I'm just here. Any caffeine? Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life, I never miss that fact. Welcome to ECAC Top Plays of the Week. This is Rod, your favorite host, back at it again with more stellar plays from Collegiate Esports. Special thanks to our partners at Esports U for the additional coverage. Let's hop straight into it. Starting off this week at number eight, we have Torchy showing aerial dominance. They show that you're gonna have to work a little bit harder if you wanna get back on their stage. Now you got to mix up your timings getting back onto the stage. Toyuchi is looking for something, able to still find the jab, oh. and the foil is going to be. Next up, we have Cabinus, showing us what impact on a support player really looks like. With the timing of a Lucio God, they come in to claim the play of the game. The player just going to deny anyone an attempt to hit the objective, and I mean, at this point in time, you got to expect those rollouts to be as quick as they are. Moving on to Rocket League, we have Swax, showing why they own the airspace with a nice self-follow-up, netting WSC the goal. As we are going to try to find out that little nugget of information, Swax is going to drop this one down and give us a tie 